Welcome to Technically Speaking. I'm Steve Brown. I'm the product manager here at Wilson Tool for Press Break Tooling. And today we've got a topic to help you select a V opening when you're going to select that die in your press break. We're going to look at the Airbend Force Chart. And in this Airbend Force Chart, it helps you determine the proper V opening size. It'll help you select the V opening that'll control your inside radius, what the minimum flange is on that V opening that you selected, and then the tonnage that's going to get produced in the application. If you want to look on while we do this video, you'd find an Airbend Force Chart either on a piece of paper that's possibly been handed to you on your press break. Uh, maybe more handy would be to grab a catalog, one of the Wilson catalogs. If you go to the back, back portion of this catalog, you'll see there's a chart in Imperial and in Metric. So let's take a look at how we're going to select that V opening. If I was to have 075 material, and I follow 075 material to the right, and I see six tons per foot, I'm running my 075 material in a half inch V opening. We're going to call that the ideal V opening. And I could probably take a V opening to either side of that. I could take a smaller V, a bigger V. But if I go to the right and I select that bigger V, the tonnage goes down. And if I keep going to the right, it keeps going down to the point where I hit the green area. And we said green is good. So tonnage wise, you can go as far to the right as you'd like to go. It'll hold the tonnage down, but your inside radius and your V opening will still be affected. So your inside radius is going to grow, your, in, your minimum flange is going to grow. If I go to the left of that selected V opening, you can see tonnage starts to go up to the point where it turns red, red is bad, and we don't want to recommend tonnage for an unsafe situation. So now let's take a look at what is your tooling rated. I know that I can run at six tons per foot, not per inch, but per foot. And if I look at my tooling and it's rated for more than that, I've got a safe situation. Make sure when you do your tonnage calculation though, that six tons isn't being applied to something shorter than per foot. So if my machine tells me that I'm running at 10 tons, but I only have a two inch bend, that's really six times 10 to give you 60 tons per foot. That'll, that'll blow up a lot of tooling. Let's change the material thickness and type. Let's go to 135 material and we're going to make it stainless steel. As I follow 135 over to my shaded box, I see 8.4 tons per foot, and that'll be calculated out of a 1.125 V opening. But you can see the tonnage is not so bad to the left one V opening, and we even have two V openings called out in this case, because it doesn't really exponentially go up just moving over a couple V openings. So, Pick your, pick your V opening based on what will fit your application. And now we said this was stainless steel material. So I need to go down in the lower right hand corner of the chart. And I look through and see that stainless steel actually has a factor of 1.5. We want 150% of the tonnage being called out on the chart because it's stainless steel. So I'm going to take my 8.4 tons, multiply it by 1.5 to get 12.6 tons per foot on the application. Our final two pieces of information on this chart would be the minimum flange required and the inside radius produced. So let's take a look at inside radius first. And we can see that each V opening produces an inside radius as we look at the chart. The inside radius is being called out in the upper right hand corner to show you it's an inside, not an outside radius. If you go to the left hand side, top page, we have formulas up there. And those formulas are dictating the V opening being called out as the ideal V opening in the chart. So if you see up to 105 material, we have T times six, and that's your V opening in the shaded box. But as I get thicker, we go T times eight, T times 10, T times 12. As you move into T times eight, you're getting away from that one material inside radius when you air bend. So if you have quarter inch material, understand you're going to have a difficult time getting a quarter inch inside radius air bending. The minimum flange is important to know on your V opening because we don't want to select a V opening with a flange that's too short because we know that if it's too short, it falls off the V opening. Or look how we call minimum flange out. It's, it's not the inside of the material anymore where the radius was, it's outside. 
So we'll take the outside dimension, this is the smallest flange, and we go back to the grid, we can see the smallest flange for each V opening is being called out. So just for instance, a 750 V opening, if my flange is shorter than 540, it's probably gonna fall off of that shoulder and we're gonna have problems with the material kicking out. Let's keep in mind also that that minimum flange that's being called out, that's for a 90 degree bend. But know that as I draw past 90, the minimum flange increases as well. Hopefully this video helped you understand the air bend force chart and how to use it so that you can use that information to select the proper V opening and a safe V opening for your, your shop. Make sure and understand and remember that those are estimations. Your actual results will probably want to be tested on real material before you make a large production run. If you liked what you saw, like us on YouTube. If you have suggestions for the future video topics or you have comments, please send them to the email that you see on the screen. And technically speaking, now you know.